Neat. Hey. I thought this was frowned upon. Shut up. I really thought you were gone this time. Are you okay? Is, uh, is Sully? He's alive. Oh, thank God. But they've got him. What? Where? They're in a convoy headed into the desert. Oh, we gotta go. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No. No, it's not. It's not that simple. Come on. They're loading up a cargo plane at the airport. They're gonna make a supply drop to the convoy. Well, we gotta be on that plane. Exactly. There it is.虽然好不容易成功登上飞机了，但一切看起来不像计划的那么顺利。在拆迁国是能力人类的面前，这架飞机显然是非常弱不禁风的。它是所有交通工具所厌恶的存在。哎，我上面有人。被发现了。又是一胖子，这几胖了我已经数不清了。枪也被扔没了，不过好在他没有立刻把我扔下飞机，给了我反击的时间。先挣脱开。胖子打这已经是第N遍了我已经不知道该说些什么了只能说不愧是胖子下面都比普通人优种一般人下面重一脚就再起不能了之后还能继续打但是还没死把这货物的降落伞拉开然后就可以搜浪了其他货物一块掉了不这些最后这辆货车还和前面其他货物我断丝连着我还能爬回去就在这种情况下敌人还是不忘了攻击我把他让去夺我他的枪杆虽然有的枪但现在还是没用的爬回飞机里再说跳到
有降落伞的话，落地也是会摔死的。所以说得找一个有降落伞的东西，就像前面这个带降落伞的货物抓住它，然后拉伞，像刚才对付那胖子的时候一样，成功了。虽然刚才我说，就算是那天也不能没有降落伞。不过仔细想， oh、God, 那的话很可能会落地以后把地球砸个窟窿，砸穿了，然后砸到宇宙里，撞入一个空间站里，然后把空间站修好了，再开飞船回来。Oh, no. oh, 当然，刚才这个传输我的脑洞，这是要降落在一望无际的卢帕利沙漠上吗？世界上最大的沙漠之一。目前来看，情况还是比较绝望的，刚好落在沙漠正中央了吗？这是。首先需要到飞机的残骸那儿去看一下，有没有什么补给品可以用一下。Okay, I think my head. Just head to the wreckage and see what I can find. Maybe s o m 在废墟残骸那儿转了一圈，结果就拿了一样最没用的东西过来——枪。在这沙漠里，枪可没法救人命，啊、除非有敌人。当然，再怎么看也不会有敌人在这种地方。虽然环境比较残酷，但是沙子做的真的是非常的、非常的、非常的好看，非常的漂亮，非常的精美。这是我看到最好看的沙漠之一，但并不是最好看的。就我个人而言，个人认为最好看的应该是陈星汉的那部《Journey》，风之旅人，或者说翻译成旅途。当然，那游戏全程所有场景全都是沙子，而且陈星汉的游戏。可以当成是艺术品吗？不过《神海三》在沙场也是下了很大功夫的。制作组特意到沙漠里也实地考察过的，在沙子里各种摸爬滚打，研究在上面走起来什么样，滚起来什么样，躺在上面什么感觉，沙子流动起来什么样，拍摄了几个小时的参考资料。光看现在我脚边滑落的这些沙子就能看出来。抛开这一些技术性的问题不讲，我们也不知道他用了什么高等的技术也好，这个也好，那个也好。单从视觉上就能看出来做的多么精美，多么精细了。两个字儿，好看足够了。按理说在沙漠里应该稍微多穿点的。那得该把袖子撸下来。又能防止脱水，又能防止晒伤。Hating the sand. Okay. 前面的地上好像有什么东西。Oh wow! Oh thank God! Okay, bring it on up. I don't care if it's cold or not. 不出所料。You gotta be kidding me. Now what? 
在这片沙漠里又没有水，究竟能撑多久？转眼到晚上了。Where are you, Sally? Where are you? 还在想着去救苏黎。Oh, come on, Nate. Okay, this is Ryan. This is the Big Dipper. Shit. Should have been in the Navy. 还想通过星座来判断位置。又到了白天了，亏得再没水的情况下能撑这么久。I don't know. I'm talking to. I'm exhausted. 前面居然看到有人，还在向我招手，幻觉了吧？ Oh, 居然看到了树，在这一片沙漠的正中央看到了树。The hell is that? <音>不用说也知道，肯定是海市蜃楼。Let's keep going. What are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Wait, wait. Son of man, you cannot say or guess. Wait, is that the? For you know only a heap of broken images. It's the well. Where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. 转了一圈又回来了。Damn it! I've been going in circles. Shit! Ah, damn it, Nate. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So, with this red sand color, like cow dung, in this sand desert, the highest temperature of the sand is 50 degrees. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Come in under the shadow of this red rock. Why? 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 Rising to meet you, I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Now it's the evening. This is the second day, the second night. In the desert, the temperature is much higher in the desert. 这个沙漠晚上温度最低能达到零下十几度。Oh God! Don't lay down. Can't lay down. Wake up! Help me! Come on, give me a hand. I've been looking for you. I couldn't find you. I don't know how long I've been out here, but look, Sally, Sally. 
这当然也是幻觉了。已经是第三天了，如果之前的夜晚不是幻觉的话。也就那次这种人心高达能做到没吃没喝的情况下，在这沙漠里待上这么久吗？还能活动得了？啥？我开玩笑的。那我是这沙漠里居然长草了，地上，而且前面有一座城市吧？村落，确实不敢用城市来形容。希望这次不是海市蜃楼。再不出也不会连续两次吧，翻过这个沙丘就快到了。周围好歹也有一些绿色植物，应该还是有水的，多少。那他真的是敬业，连这种时候都忘不了他拆迁的使命。好深一口井，就是没水。Damn it! Damn it! It's dry. Oh, 这边有一点。Here we go. It's not drinkable. 都喝完了，你告诉我不能喝。就算没吃没喝，过了这么久，在太阳底下暴晒这么久，照样有力量来爬墙。而且之前从废墟那儿捡到的那把枪，也不知道什么时候给丢了。这里能有什么能有用的东西？估计还是要找一下。这种地方居然能遇到敌人，而且最重要的是，我现在还没武器，先到左边来找营地。右边有一个拿枪的枪的，会绕过来，不好打他。把左边这个金蛋杀死更安全一些。这里还是从中弹后更好打，但我还是不打算这么干。从这个地方找掩体就行，这个掩体还算是比较好用。小心敌人从左边绕过来，还有他们的手雷。正好我现在没手雷，他们给我扔手雷的话，刚好算是我的手雷了。给他们都扔过去，把他们炸死。前面的平台上有两个，第二个刚上去，哎，在他上去之前我就要把他干死了，又扔过来一个。那边左边人杀光了，现在集中就右边，右边还有一个重甲兵，过一会儿才会下来。现在基本就是在给我扔手雷送手雷，先把杂兵全体全力又给我又给我送过来一颗，然后又帮我炸死一个，下来了。啊，左边这又来一个，又送。嗯、哎，我去，这干这掩体位置不好，差点炸到自己，就剩这一个重甲兵了，在他攻击的间歇，我去。往前推进一下，他干嘛呢？趁现在，哎，他想扔手雷，先等扔了以后我再进弹，不然他手雷就掉我脚底下了，我都没法躲，肯定会把我炸死。最后一击还夺过来他的武器了，再补充一下弹药，然后到二层去，二层还有一些弹药可以补充。虽然下面还有敌人，但是不用管他们，我只要爬上来的话，他们现在也发现不了我。换这把三连发手枪，哎，别放错了。这边还有手雷可以捡。从这里下来以后是一个非常好守的位置，只有一个入口，而且两边都有掩体，敌人距离也都算比较近的。实在不行的话，不敢露头也可以盲射。右边这两扇门有敌人破门而出，扔个手雷，哎，扔扔早了
看其中一扇门，敌人先出来了，稍微有点激动，不然的话可以把他们都炸死。直接盲射吧。目测还有这两个人应该，也没有具体数，一共多少个，反正人挺多就对了。最后一个近战。还有人，现在有人说话了。我的掩体散了。这次应该真的是最后一个了。补充一下弹药。这墙上立着两把 M 九，然后敌人还掉了那那些三零八的弹药，还有手雷。哦，手雷我满了。把我落脚点打他了，不过刚好给我自动生成一个掩体，在他露头之前就把他干掉。当然，他的枪也是非常的准，非常狠的。Damn it, I'm trapped down here. 这里还有弹药可以捡。然后这种红木板包裹的柱子都是可以破坏掉的，把柱子打断，给自己开路啊。Good work. 差点砸到自己。从这爬过去以后。小心也会有敌人埋伏，而且非常坑爹的一个地方，特容易死。下来立刻往后跑，这边楼梯可以给我当一个掩体，正好是另一个敌人的死角。这伙杀伤力特强，还没等我降下来的时候，他就出来了。哎，你看我才露头多多一会儿，就已经被打成濒死了。上来之后，这边还有一个，只不过他拿的是狙击，所以说很容易对付，就不浪费我步枪的弹药了。Shit. This is getting ridiculous. You're even more ridiculous. In the jungle, eating three days, not eating, 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 No, no, no! I'm going to send the gun. I'll come back later. 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 这样全部敌人就都杀光了，手雷没必要太吝啬，他们掉很多很多手雷的，很多很多弹药，周围有很多 M9 从这墙上立着。虽然我平时不喜欢捡子弹浪费时间什么的，不过接下来战斗里子弹少了真不好打，所以说多搜刮一下，把弹药补满尽量。但是这里也没补满，没补满就这样吧，我也不会浪费更多时间去找。146发，差不多了。钻过这个小缝，亏你不知道前面有什么也敢钻。哎，制作组又一次证明了贫乳即是王道，凶的稍微大一点点就会卡死在这里，永远出不去了。OK， hopefully that's the last one。我也是这样。但显然这个世界没有这么天真。这儿威胁最大的就是左边那个机枪，在二层，它周围的柱子都是可以破坏掉的。我先把最右边那个敌人杀死，是因为我到最右边来找掩体。这里算是一个这机枪的死角了，把这个木板破坏掉。这玩意儿特别碍事啊！先清一下杂兵。刚才也说了，这个地方算是一个死角，所以说机枪可以等等。杂兵喜欢绕后，威胁反而更大了。又给我送手雷来，用不着我现在。刚才这站位不好，所以说没法把手雷直接直接扔过去。柱子的话，只需要破坏三根就可以。现在刚才我是炸断了一根，再扔个手雷，有时候扔得好的话，可以直接一次性炸断两根。好、哦，还真炸断两根，机枪破坏掉了。破坏掉之后又会来一批敌人，先从这瞄好了，车顶上出来一个拿 p g 的，先把他干死。他已经干死了。就算不先把他干死的话，我这个位置也算是比较好守的一个位置，也不容易被他炸到。这敌人这么快就已经绕过来了，新来的这一批，除了刚才那个拿 RPG 的威胁比较大以外，还有两个重甲兵
但是在对付他们之前，最好先把杂兵都清了。对付他们的话，周围有 RPG 可以用。目测还有这一个杂兵，先找好掩体，免得被这重甲兵打到。哪儿了？跑挺快呢。骷骷髅头。哎我！哎，我刚收枪，他就露头，瞄着时候他就死活不露。可以捡 RPG 轰这重甲兵吗？小心别轰到自己就行。这一下还没死，有事，刚好还给我送手雷来了，正好，手雷补一下就该死了。还剩一个重甲兵，这边能补充一下 P G 的弹药。再来一发，还没死，再补个手，哎，这后躲到井里去了，没炸到。啊我的可真够快的，直接又进去。啊、哦，好在这次炸到了，再减发 P G， 把这门给炸开。这辆车虽然是冲着我滚下来的，不过就算我不躲，他也是压不到我的。没必要补充弹药了，也没必要换枪了。反正接下来的枪是自动给我换的。马上就会被敌人来一次空头刺杀了。这不死的肯定不是我。落地之后立刻往前冲刺，找掩体，不然的话死定了。极度坑爹的一个地方。人太多，火力太猛。此时他的内心是绝望的。English. What? English. I speak English. No, 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 no. no. Don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. Hatalo, hatu, shilo. Yalla, hatalo. 被这些陌生人救了一命，还让我上了他们的马。人家为了一个素不相识的陌生人搭上自己的命，他死了只能我自己骑马了，找大部队。还特意等着我跟上去，绕了一圈又回来了，跟跟紧他们。路上敌人会用各种武器攻击我，但是我压根没必要还手，又是狙击又是 RPG 的，队友全都替我把他们解决了。虽然我没看见队友开枪。用捡来的 RPG 把这门轰开，逃走。You are far from home, America. Shukran. You do not belong out here. Any of you. You spared me. Why not just kill me along with the others? That would have been impolite. You are in distress. Even an enemy must be fed and sheltered. Are you my enemy, American? Drake. Hmm? My name, it's uh, Drake. Salim, I am Sheikh of this tribe. Uh, well, I uh, don't mean to be forward, Salim, but I need a horse. I don't have anything to offer in return. You plan to attack the English caravan alone? You know about them. My scouts have been tracking them for two days. 
Why are you here? Why do the English cross the Rubal Khali? They're looking for the lost city of Ubar. Hiram of the Pillars. They've taken my friend hostage. He's the only one who knows the way. Once they find Aram, he'll be worthless to them. They'll kill him. If they find Aram, we are all dead. Three thousand years ago, King Solomon commanded the power of the Jinn. Demons born of smokeless fire. Until they rebelled, he imprisoned them in a vessel of brass and cast it into the depths of the city. Iran became a place of evil, cursed by the tormented spirits of the Jinn. The English must not reach the city. If they unleash the power of the Jinn... We don't have much time, do we? No. But they have the greater numbers. We cannot attack them in the open. Tonight, rest. Tomorrow, they enter the canyons. We'll take them there. We ride at dawn. That's a very good question. What does the co-lead game designer of Uncharted 3 do? Um, it's, uh, we're, we're primarily in charge of um, making sure that uh, the game... <sighs> how, do, how do you even describe it? It's so hard. I mean, I look at it so... I look at it as a, as a, as a game designer being the, the storyteller, you know, the, the director, the, the, the crafter of the experience. A co-lead game designer at Naughty Dog is responsible for whatever we got to do right now. That can mean uh, maybe coming up with a good idea. Uh, it very often means uh, listening to good ideas from our teammates all around us, not just on the design team, but the artists and the animators, the programmers and the audio people, the visual effects guys that we work with, all are terrific game designers in their own ways. We wear a lot of hats. I mean, all the leads at Naughty Dog, we have a lot more responsibility, I think, um, than a lot of studios uh, because we don't have in-house producers. We kind of are the managers and producers of the team. They're really the ones who handle uh, the scheduling and making sure that all of the individual animations and uh, foreground assets and physics assets and, and uh, whatever else may be necessary uh, for their levels get into the game at the right time and work awesome and have the design specs and everything of that sort. My main job is sort of corralling the designers into a sort of coherent vision for what the game is going to come out like and uh, and how uh, we translate what you know we call the active cinematic experience into a, a gameplay that the player is going to like and, and be interested in all the time. I think a game designer's first uh, and most important role is to be an advocate for the player. We're always thinking about the player's experience, really from the very beginning when they become aware of the game, uh, all the way through to, uh, you know, when they're putting in their hundredth hour in our multiplayer game. We're always thinking about how can we make their experience better, how can we draw them further into the fictional interactive world that we've created, and how can we entertain them and surprise them and delight them. We're unwilling to settle for anything other than what we can to be the best possible experience that we can create. The whole idea of the active cinematic experience, you know, the playable Hollywood blockbuster, only barely made it in. There was like one moment in Uncharted 1 that pretty much everyone picked out as like, that's the bit that we want to do in Uncharted 2. And so Uncharted 2 was, hey, that, that little moment, that 30 seconds of gameplay, how do we make a game that evokes that the entire time? Uncharted 2 was an amazing experience, putting that game together, creating all of that new technology uh, and doing the groundbreaking things that we did with it. There were so many things in Uncharted 2 that we did that had never been done before. In particular in terms of having characters running around interacting on an environment that could move. And so I guess in the process of making Uncharted 3, uh, we really took that idea and ran with it. Don't. Stay down. We now felt like we had more 
Kate. More freedom and, and time and energy to explore more of the artistic aspects of it. As storytellers, it's really important to us that the viewer um, is engaged with our characters. What we really put a lot of focus on, especially with Drake, is to convey thought through his body language. When he's in an environment where a tense environment, like we want him to show that. When he's relaxed, we want you to see that. And so we've been able to change the way that he moves based on his environment, based on where he's at in the story. There might be sections where um, Drake is just completely exhausted and when you stop moving him he'll just collapse to the ground and you you kind of pick him back up again and you feel kind of like come on like let's go with you know it's just a little bit further we can do this and it's something that I hope the players appreciate suddenly we have the great majority of the technology that we need to make the type of game that we wanted to make from the beginning and the question becomes, well, where do we go from here? Immediately, we, we thought about uh, desert, sand. You know, sand is a, a very big challenge technologically. Um, it flows and moves and mounds and um, changes and shifts uh, like water, but also in a more viscous way. So there are all sorts of different uh, gameplay ideas that came from that. I see him! If we could do anything at all that we wanted to do with the same kind of technology, what could we do? And that's what's led us to think of insane things like a whole level which turns, you know, through 90 degrees uh, at key stages of the gameplay on the sinking cruise ship. No, 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 no. Well, the cruise ship is uh, one of the most technologically advanced levels I've ever worked on, and certainly I think any other company's worked on. Like the cruise ship is being driven by a real-time wave ocean simulation that drives the animation of the ship, so it never cycles the same way twice. It, it, you know, it, it feels different every time you play it. When I started the cruise ship, I was actually planning on faking most of that with animation. But then uh, we have this awesome guy, uh, Carlos Gonzalez, here, and he he was like. Why would you do that? Why would you fake it with an animation when we can make you a fully procedural ocean? That's, that's one of the, the other really funny things about Naughty Dog is that I asked for a simpler feature and Carlos gave me a real-time fully procedural ocean. That's how Naughty Dog rolls. <laughs> The other sort of big thing that we try to do is um, to make sure that our multiplayer this time felt uh, much more diverse and interesting and, um, and sort of a, a make it a big ticket item. So what, what, what does Uncharted mean, right? Like it's not only like this big cinematic experience, right? It's also about like your comrades, right? Like the people who you're working with all the time, right? And, and so we looked at that and like, well, what do we do about that? Okay, well, let's come up with the buddy system. And in single player, we have this cargo plane and it's really cool sequence in single player. It's extraordinary, it's extraordinary. And I saw that and I went to Evan Wells and I said, Evan, we need to use that in a multiplayer map. I'm thinking like the plane's gonna come down this runway, there's gonna be moving trucks around the plane, you're gonna be jumping plane to plane to truck to, to plane. It's gonna be epic, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be incredible. It was one of the most hardest things I've done in my entire life. I saw that and I was like, I thought about all the people that, that went into making that, the animators and the foreground artists and Kurt just sitting there and hooking everything up in all the different possible ways it could work. And I was like, we're crazy. So many weeks of work went into less than a 30 second sequence. You know, I, I look at the stuff that we do and, and I can't believe how much love each individual person puts into the stuff that they're responsible for. I think that that kind of attention to detail is really important um, for a number of different reasons, but uh, the most important reason is that people recognize it and they love it. It's those moments that make a Naughty Dog game different. So when you ask why are we passionate about what we do, it's because we're given the opportunity to do this and we're surrounded by people who can do it and who want to do it. We have an incredible amount of resources at our disposal, but we think so much bigger than what we have um, that there's always something that's pushing us to, to go a little bit further. The, the way the studio gets things done is because people care. 
and the mentality of the company is if if we see you care so much then we'll let you go and go take care of it and i think that's really what makes the company come together